Eric Dolph covering. My name is Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Here it is Friday, and I believe we're around the 21st of February right about now. And uh, apologize, we've really been tied up with a lot of issues here lately and not been as productive as we would like to. But uh, I think the broadcast today is going to be a blessing to many of you as far as some insights we're going to be sharing. Uh, going to be getting into how jihadists are funded. And this is actually from a special broadcast we just did on Patreon. Of course, Patreon does go much deeper into this subject than what I'll speak about here tonight on Israeli News Live. But on Israeli News Live, we're going to be dealing with some other issues as well because there are more of these wars being funded. Uh, here on uh, southfront.org, they're already uh, putting out today U.S. plans to deploy special forces, troops, weapons close to Venezuela border, according to the Russian Foreign Ministry, uh, Maria Zakharova, who has actually uh, put out a statement that says the development of events in Venezuela has come to a critical point. Everyone understands this. On February the 23rd, a dangerous large-scale provocation is set to take place in instigated by Washington led crossing the Venezuelan border with so-called humanitarian convoy which may lead to clashes between supporters and opponents forming a convenient pretext for military action to remove the current legitimate president from government that was quoted by Maria Zakharova now let me make something clear to you. We know that just yesterday, in fact, right after we finished our broadcast, there was an altercation down at the border where it is alleged that uh, pro-Maduro uh, uh, forces fired on innocent civilians. Immediately, the first thing that came to my mind is like the situation that happened in Ukraine, staged, opposition things that are going on that are making it look like the government doing it when it may actually not be the government to start with. Uh, you have to understand there are already some uh, defectors uh, from the Maduro government that's coming out and uh, siding and you never know what could be going on in order to bring down this government and to get it into a new alignment of a new world order. And that's what I'm seeing on every front that we look at. Uh, if we look at RT as well, they put out here, first Venezuela, now Nicaragua, Bolton says, Ortega, de, Ortega's days number, people will soon be free. Now, I don't think that Ortega necessarily is the best guy on the block either, just like I don't believe that Maduro is. But the problem is, what you don't understand is that all the drugs that run through Nicaragua, that run through Venezuela, uh, Colombia, uh, Peru, and all these other nations are used to fund all these wars in the Middle East, not to mention those in Venezuela, Ukraine, Nicaragua, etc., don't believe me? Let me share with you a very important fact here from John Stockwell, former director of the CIA field operations, including Nicaragua, the Contra affair. And I go into that as well on Patreon because of some of the uh, direct connections that I had in those operations there. Listen in on this right here. 25 as the chief of the Angola uh, task force running the secret war in Angola. It was the third CI secret war I was part of. The national security uh, law creating the National Security Council and the CIA, as you know, was passed in 1947. The CIA was given this charter to perform such other duties and function as might be ne necessary to the national security interests and given a vague authority to protect its sor sources and methods. And I think it was in the mid-80s that I coined this phrase, the third, third World War, because in my research I realized that we were not attacking the Soviet Union and the CIA's third world countries. We were attacking people in the Third World. And I'm going to just quickly, in the interest of time, just give you a little sense of what that, uh, what that means, this Third World War. Uh, basically, it's the third, I believe, in terms of loss of life and human destruction, the third bloodiest war in all of history. They undertake to run operations in every corner of the globe. Uh, they also undertook the license of operating uh, just totally above and beyond U.S. laws. They had a license, if you will, to kill, but also they, they took that to a license to smuggle drugs, a license to do all kinds of things to other people in other societies in violation of international law, our law, and every principle of nations working together for a healthier and more peaceful 
uh, world. Meanwhile, again, they battled to convert the U.S. legal system in such a way that it would give them control of our society. Now, we have massive documentation of what they call the secret wars of the CIA. We don't have to guess or speculate. We had the church committee investigate them in 1975, gave us our first really in-depth, powerful look inside this structure. Senator Church said in the 14 years before he did his investigation that he found they had run 900 major operations and 3,000 minor operations. And if you extrapolate that over the whole period of the 40-odd years that we've had a CIA, you come up with 3,000 major operations and over 10,000 minor operations. Now just imagine what's going on today. John Stock, while speaking here back in, I think, the 90s uh, on this particular broadcast there, I worked with him from 1983 to 1990, and I can affirm much of what he says because I knew, was involved in planning with Mexico, with Belize, uh, also knew a lot about Nicaragua, the, uh, the weapons that were being sent to the Contras there, uh, and how the CIA was working in these covert operations and smuggling drugs in order to be able to finance the operation. Some of that I didn't learn until later down the road and was able to put it together, especially after spending much time with a former colleague of mine. Uh, anyway, we'll go more into that into Patreon, but my point is, is he mentions Nicaragua in there, and of course, what is it, John Bolton, going back to the little pet there of Nicaragua, time to overthrow Nicaragua once and for all. Yes, yeah, not only just for a new world order, but it's because Nicaragua and these other southern countries, they are infringing on the drug trade that is coming into the United States, and I think this is one reason why President Trump needs a wall on the southern border. Uh, they don't want no one coming on through the southern border making money and profiteering off of drugs being sold to Americans at a cheaper rate uh, because then they don't have the money that they need, the billions and trillions that they need to be able to fund all these jihadists that are going on in the Middle East there. So these are some of the things that we know of and we know of personally. And now, uh, thanks to a good friend of ours, a source that we have, we learned a little bit more. And I have to say on this here, this is going to be alleged. I cannot verify independently, but I have a very good valid source from the Middle East there uh, that has shared with me in-depth details about the uh, U.S. poppy trade that is happening in Afghanistan. Uh, went into great details about the operation uh, that goes on there and how that the drugs are smuggled out of the country, how that they are grown on a level of agriculture uh, that is unprecedented uh, in, in modern history and far beyond the means of the Afghan government to be able to cultivate and produce the amount of poppy uh, that is being smuggled out of the country uh, and sold not only in Europe but also in the United States. Uh, I was told that one of the big crises that we see in Iran is that lack of water. Uh, as we know that was also brought out by Prime Minister Netanyahu in this famous video right here, and I won't play it too loud because we're all Here's aware that. of it, the but, uh, but uh, let me, let's, let's listen Iran to it. Suffers from some levels of drought. Issa Kalantari, a former Iranian agriculture minister, said that 50 million Iranians could be forced out of their homes due to environmental damage. 50 million. Millions of Iranian children are suffering due to mismanagement, to incompetence, and the theft of vital resources by the Iranian regime. Now, the Prime Minister says he puts the blame on the Iranian regime that is stealing those vital resources. Now, there is a complicity uh, that we have learned between the Revolutionary Guard and the United States military. And oddly enough, the Israeli military, we have uh, information here from the Times of Israel, excuse me, not the Times of Israel, but uh, uh, over here from uh, the media. Uh, uh, MediaLine.org, where they are showing clearly that the Israelis, this just came out on the 12th of February, are operating from U.S. military bases in Afghanistan. Uh, but, like I said, they're, they're cooperating together. The U.S., now we see Israeli military sources there, and you have to wonder why the United States has never left the, the Middle East there. If you look at this article right here, 
uh, that's on the Guardian, the art the, the article here, Mr. McCoy uh, states after 16 years and one trillion dollars spent, there is no end to the fighting, but Western intervention has resulted in Afghanistan becoming the world's first true narco state. Why, do, why don't we leave this country? Why have we had, as it states in the article, 2,300 soldiers uh, that, have, that have fallen casualties to this war over there? Why can't the world's largest military, or not largest, but the most sophisticated military on the planet, not be able to defeat the Taliban and to be able to really get control of this country? Well, it's because from the source that I have that it is we, we, we are heavily involved in protecting and growing the poppy fields there inside of Afghanistan, and then those drugs are being exported. Now, I was told that the United States gets their exports directly and by U.S. military airlifting it right into our country. And he said, no, it's not where they're stuffing it in their pants, their pockets, or even in their anatomy. They're actually carrying this in large freight containers by the U.S. military. He says, and no one is asking about what's in that plane when it returns home. Uh, but also, I was given the information about how it makes its way into Europe. And in Europe, it's not going by plane. I was told that the Revolutionary Guard in Iran cooperates with the U.S. military, where they will bring a large convoy of military vehicles to the border that meets the U.S. military convoy that loads up all this drugs, sends them down to Turkey. Turkey in hand exchanges it. It goes from Turkey to Bulgaria. The Bulgarian military then brings it up into the European uh, Union. Union, and those drugs are then distributed throughout the country to be sold to the people there. These are some alarming things that we're finding out and very shocking. And again, we have to say alleged, but we believe our source is very, um, very thorough in the information that he has shared with us thus far on these, uh, these particular events. But then he also goes a little bit further. He explains to us the agricultural issue. He said, you have to understand, there is a water agreement between Iran and Afghanistan, as it's mentioned here in this article right here uh, on uh, avupress.com, Iran-Afghanistan Afghanistan discussed the Himan River issue. Uh, this is an agreement back in 1973 that was agreed upon by the two nations and other nations, as he pointed out to me, that have agreed upon the share of water resources. In other words, in this case here, the Hilman River flows down into the western parts of Iran. Now, if you remember, Prime Minister Netanyahu in his video said parts of Iran are suffering from a water shortage, and he blames it on the Iranian regime. Well, in part, he is right in saying that because, as we have been told, the Revolutionary Guard is working in concert with the U.S. military and supplying this drugs to the European Union and, as I've already shared with you, those access lines that they're doing it in. But he also said to me the reason why the water is being cut off is because the amount of water that is needed to be able to pump into higher elevations where the poppy is being grown in Afghanistan is a tremendous amount of water needed and therefore they have been taking far more of their share to be able to grow these mass crops in the Afghanistan and thus the Iranian people are only getting a trickle downstream nowhere near the amount that it was agreed upon in this pact back in 1973 so then of course we got into the issue about what is used for all the profits just like I knew myself from the times that I worked back in 83 to 1990, and of course the cover-up that was done then by H.W. Bush and the largest, one of the largest uh, money laundering schemes in the Southeast United States. We find out that here as well, he said that the money is used to supply the weapons and the, and the funds needed to, to fund ISIS there in the Middle East. Not only ISIS, but the other jihadist forces that are fighting inside of Syria to overthrow Syria. And of course, he said the money goes even further than there, covering in other wars around the globe. As I have mentioned as well, places like Venezuela, Ukraine, Nigeria, uh, down in South Africa, now, or excuse me, in Africa now, Central Africa that is going on, and even Nicaragua. There is a tremendous amount of wars that have to be funded for this new world order. And it seems like that uh, good old U.S. of A., the deep state, is heavily involved in making sure that there is plenty of drugs, dope up Americans and Europeans, shell out all the cash, 
in order to be able to fund these global this global threat that we're facing today. So, you know, guys, when we look at what's going on and we see the superficial side that's brought out in mainstream media, know that there's really a way that this is all funded. It's not just taxpayer dollars. Yeah, we see some of that go out as well, no doubt. And of course, all we do here in America is borrow this money from the probably the IMF at uh, substantial interest rates. Uh, and we go further and further into debt to fight a bunch of wars for a new world order when, after all, the headquarters will be in Jerusalem. And no, it's not just the Jewish uh, leaders of Israel either. They are working in concert with Rome on this new world order. It's troubling, and I don't see any way out except the true coming of the Messiah, and it won't be the fake one that Rome and Israel has planned in their third temple that no doubt they will soon build to usher in what they call a millennial reign. And you know, it's kind of interesting we mentioned the millennial reign. I call it a fake millennial reign in this case here, not to say that God will not have a true millennial reign, but I say fake because they're going to fake a millennial reign. And of course, they can bring an entire global peace pretty quickly because you forget they're the ones that fund it. Cut the funding off, the wars will stop. I'm Stephen Benin with Israeli News Live. In a world of Ain Shalom, there is no peace. Good evening. Thank you for watching. Support the broadcast. Your help and your support is what keeps these type stories coming to you. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there. Our address appears here at the bottom of the screen. And of course, if for some reason Israeli News Live is not working right, IsraelReturns.com. That's .com on Israel Returns. We also have our donation line there. Thank you very much and blessings to you.